conference class because in the conference class we got men and women. Mostly men today, but I see two or three women that are staying in here this morning. And you're welcome. But it's good to have Brother Jason back in town and uh, back this morning and teach this class. So without any further work, we'll ask Brother Jason to come and give what God has put on his heart. All right. Mostly men. That's kind of scary. No offense to the men. When you're the new guy coming in, sometimes the friendly smiles of women just kind of calm the heart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Men are like, women are like, oh, don't you look nice? Men are like, who is this guy? You know, so, but uh, that's all right. If you have a Bible, I'd like you to turn first of all to John chapter 13. We're going to look at a couple of things this morning. I don't think we're going to be finished in the Sunday school hour uh, with this. And so what I plan on doing is uh, going through part of this this morning, and I'm going to finish it tonight in the evening service. And that's something different for the morning service. So that is the plan, Lord willing. Sometimes things change, sometimes they don't. John chapter 13, verse number 34. Let's have a quick word of prayer to start our service from our Father. We thank you for the opportunity we have to be here. Lord, I pray you bless our service this morning, our Sunday school hour. Father, I pray that you just put your hand upon your word this morning, Lord. I fall into my heart, so hope and receptive to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Some people ask, Brad, why don't you keep up, Jack? Well, one is it's hot, <laughs> and two, it's easier to wash the shirt than it is to dry clean your suits. So, I'm all about being cheap, and uh, nothing to do with being spiritual. So, that's the case right there. Um, I want to look at, really, the uh, this morning, like I mentioned, the Sunday School, and then tonight, uh, finishing up with this idea. You know, there's uh, as we go through life, there are many different kinds of relationships uh, that we have. We have... Uh, husband and wife relationship, we have the student-teacher relationship, we have, you know, the boyfriend-girlfriend type of relationships, we have peers-to-peer uh, relationships, and throughout all these areas of life, one truth stands out that God is greatly concerned about how we treat each other. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Greatly concerned about how you and I, as brothers and sisters in Christ, treat each other. One man said this about this thought. This is one of the hallmarks of Christianity, again, in reference to how we treat each other. God has not called us to isolate ourselves from the world or from each other to live the Christian life. He has called us to learn to relate to other people, whether it be at home, at school, at church, or in society, so that we will be able to minister to their spiritual needs. How you and I treat each other is a hallmark of Christianity. I believe Jesus said it when he said that, uh, by this shall all men know that you are disciples. What? If you have love, one for another. What does he say? You need to learn how to treat each other right. You know, disciples, you learn how to, how, to, how to treat. And that's what I want to look at this morning and tonight. Ten commandments, if you will. I'm sure there's more that we can discuss. I wrote down ten. Ten commandments of one another, how you and I are supposed to treat each other. Just by way of introduction, in Hebrews 3.13 says this, but exhort or encourage one another daily. Yeah. Well, I, you know, when I come to church, I, I make sure I'll do these duties that you're talking about. Church is not the only facet or place in which you and I are supposed to be treating yeah. each other nicely. Yeah. When, Amen. when we cross each other's paths in Walmart or yeah. when we... We uh, go to fellowship at Zaxby's or you know, whatever, whatever the case may be in our life when we come across it. It's not a, it's not a once a week thing. It's not a church thing. Uh, it's a daily thing, he says here. Uh, exhort one of the daily, while it's called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So let's look at some of these one another's that the Bible mentions. First of all here, found in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 34. He says here, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know, here's that phrase, that, that you know, my son, if you have love, one or to another. 
And so the first one of them this morning, you know, this is guys, some, mostly guys, there are a few ladies in here, but uh, this is one of those ones that guys don't really do well with because we just don't know what to do sometimes with our emotions. Uh, women are more emoting creatures. They're the ones that put all the flowery emoji things on Facebook, and guys just, you know, happy birthday to my wonderful husband, who I would with all these things, and guys go, thanks. <laughs> you know? Women will, you know, I don't know why this is, but this is the way God created. You ever, like, notice sometimes you're in a restaurant or you're someplace, and, you know, one woman has to use the restroom, and it's like, you know, all the other ladies follow her. Now, guys, if, that, if we did that, that would be really, really weird. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay? You know, ladies will, will hug and they'll cry with each other. Yeah. You know, guys, we don't know what to do with another brother, you know, praise down and, like, you know, just in the arm and, woo, we're good to go. And that's just not the way it works. So sometimes we're looking at love and guys, sometimes that's a hard one for us to swallow because we just don't know what to do. Not that we're not emotive, emotive creatures. We don't. It's not that God created us uh, emotionless. We just sometimes have a hard time bringing those emotions that God put on us to the surface because it makes us feel unmanly. Yeah. Now, how many of us have heard this growing up, perhaps in time, maybe more so in time past, real men don't cry. Yeah. 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 That's the farthest thing from the truth, guys. Yeah. I hope you understand right. that, that real right. men can cry. Yeah. There are some times in our life with men we do need to cry. Yeah. It yeah. shows our compassion. It shows our mercy. Jesus wept. Amen. We'll talk about the, the, the manliest man, if you want to call that, in yeah. human side. There was, it was Christ, and of course, he wept what? Over the death of a loved one. Yeah. So if Jesus can cry, so can you. And I'm not saying to walk around and just cry over everything. I'll be honest with you. I have, I have six children, I have girls. I think we have girls. <laughs> girls do something special to the heart of dads. And uh, so sometimes I, I watch things and I tear up. You know, yeah. I watch. Some of their shows, you know, and, and I see something sappy on TV, a commercial, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, will, I kind of tear up a little bit. I'm, I'm not one of those overly emoting guys, but at the same time, you ask my kids, you know, is there a, if there's a sappy scene on TV sometimes, I'll go, yeah. so it does happen to some of us, I don't know. If that makes me less of a man, I don't know. But anyway, he says here, a new commandment I'm giving. Now, it wasn't a new command. It's not like he's saying, hey, you know, I'm teaching something brand new. But what he's saying is, listen. We're taking the old and we're going to apply it in some new ways. He said, I'm going to give you a new commandment that you learn to love each other. How are you and I to love each other? He says, as I have, uh, he says here, uh, as I have loved you. Yeah. And of course, we understand that to be a sacrificial love. Christ loved the disciples in a way they never mm -hmm. were loved before. Yeah. And of course, here he is, God in the flesh, walking amongst them, teaching them how to love. He says here, that you need to learn how to love one another. You know, this is the first one I want to mention because if we and I don't need to learn how to love each other, the rest of these aren't going to matter whatsoever. Right, right, right. Because all the rest of these are based upon love. When God gave the Ten Commandments there in Exodus chapter 20, the first four have to do with our relationship to God, and the last six have to do with our relationship to each other. Yeah. If you and I don't know how to love God, we'll never learn how to love each other. That's right. And if you and I don't know how to love, period, we'll never be able then to express the other things that God mentions to us in the Bible. And so this is the first one because if we don't get it, we're not going to get the rest. This is the primary uh, command that he's yeah. given you. You and I need to learn to love. So not just, you know, you know how do I, what does that mean? i got to walk around and say I love you to everybody. That, guys, that's awkward. That's not how love is oftentimes displayed, you know? We tell our wives we love them, and of course we should do that. You know, we don't, we're not gonna walk up to some strange guy in the store, especially at Target, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and say, I love you. Yeah. You know, the next visit will be in the bathroom. I don't understand that, but that's, you know, whatever. But we're not gonna do that, but there are ways that you and I show we love each other. Because we're, we come to church, we fellowship. Yeah. You know, we, we shake hands, we, we we care about, we're going to go through so many things, but I'm not necessarily going through all right now. We care uh, about each other. So let me ask you a question. Guys and ladies are in the service this morning. Do you love those that you go to church with? Amen. Amen. Well, I, I love my family. I understand that. Yeah. What about the people that, that are on the other side of the aisle? Yeah. Yeah. What about the people that are on the other, you know, the, the, the sheep and the goats, it seems like, you know? A certain crowd sits over here, a certain crowd sits over here, and sometimes they never come in contact with yeah. each other. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, you want to talk about a recipe for disaster in church. Yeah. Well, we looked at that yesterday. So in discord among the brethren, if they yeah. seven things, or six things, 
God hates these seven are an abomination. Yep. Seventh one is those that sow discord. Man, God hates discord. The devil yep. will love nothing more than to weasel his way into oh, a yeah. congregation of people yep. and sow discord. You know why there's discord in the church? Because people have not learned to love each other. Uh, you love somebody, guess what? You want the best for them. You love somebody, you care about them. You love somebody, you, you want to see them succeed. You're not jealous over, oh, he got he, he got two times this, this month to sing a special. I, I, I haven't so asked for a law. See, jealousy abounds in the church. He was asked to lead songs. He, would, he, he, he was asked to usher and hold up. But now, you know, nobody even talks to me. See how sometimes jealous, we're not careful. Yeah. We, 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 don't, we don't allow the love to show forth. And we, we get so petty in our little things and our problems that we don't learn how to we ask this question. Yeah. I, I understand this church has gone through some things. not necessarily trying to rip the band-aid off. Mm -hmm. What about the folks who have left? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Love yeah. them. Amen. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that all are right or all are wrong. I'm just saying the love that you have towards somebody will then dictate how you respond and treat that individual. Yeah, that's right. So the first one he mentions here is number one, love one another. Yeah. You've got to, you, you've got to uh, uh, analyze that yourself. I can't walk around with what, you know, a little love meter. <laughs> and it doesn't go, go by you and there's nothing registered on your day. You know, we don't, have, we don't have that capability. So you've got to judge yourself. Do I love people? Do I care about them? Do I love those that are here? Do I love those who are on the other side of the church out? Do I even know their names? Amen. Now, you know, it's hard for me. You know, it's one of me, or a few of us, but there's like many of you, so I'm like, Bob? No, I'm going to get it right eventually. There's enough Bob's around that eventually I'll get the right Bob. But uh, do you know their names? Do you know their children's names? Do you know, you know, do you care about those kind of things? Love one another. Number two, the Romans chapter 14 and verse 13. We want to get through. Like I said, we have ten of these, and there's so much we can say about each one. But for the sake of time, just kind of skimming through some things and kind of hitting some of the highlights. Romans chapter 14, verse 13. Ooh, man! I'll tell you what. You want to talk about a big one in churches? I don't know what it is, but especially somebody. I say this out loud in front of everybody. Especially sometimes in independent Baptist churches. This one is big. Look what it says you. Let us now, therefore, what's the next couple words? Judge one another. Anymore. But rather, but judge rather than this, or this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or occasion of fall in his brother's way. He says we ought not to judge one another anymore. Which gives us the indication that there must have been some kind of judgment judgment going on here. But yeah. sometimes if we're not careful, we walk around and we judge other people for yeah. what they do yeah. or, what we, or what they don't do. Yeah. Amen. And I think sometimes the reason why we do judge is because just like the Pharisees, yeah. we have created our own lists of do's and don'ts, right and wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And this is my list, and if you don't fall in line with my list, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I, I've said this before, and, and, and it bears repeating. It's a cute little phrase I made up myself, so if you want to write it down in the Bible and put my name down, I'm the one who created this, and so I'm going to take full credit for this one. But we walk around, and we, we, we're like, somehow we have our list. Now, I'm not talking about if the Bible says it. You and I ought to do, regardless of what we think about the matter or not. Amen. But I'm talking about, you know, when God gave the Ten Commandments, remember it was the Pharisees, the religious leaders, who came up with 613 yeah. other laws yeah. based upon the Ten Commandments uh, that were put there because they wanted to have some kind of control over the actions and things of the people. Yeah. God created ten. Mankind created 613. And so sometimes the, the less spiritual we are, the more our list grows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying now, you say, we're at, we ought to have standards. I'm not saying that at all. But I think, understand, I think you understand the heart of that. We're saying we come across with lists, and sometimes we think, well, I, I dress different than you. I, I act different than you. I listen to different kind of music, and therefore I'm better than you. Yeah. We walk around thinking sometimes that our stink doesn't stink. So here's the phrase. Sometimes we think if my stink 
stings less than your stink. Then my stink don't stink. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I sin different than you sin. Yeah. Therefore, my sin ain't really sin. Yeah. yeah, come on. I, I do things different than you do, but when I'm doing different than you do, I'm doing the right thing and you're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. Mm. I think when we get to heaven, I think God's going to be more concerned about how you and I love each other yeah. and how you and I treat each other and how we love Him, our relationship with Him, as opposed to maybe some of those lists that we have that maybe in all grand scheme of things may not be all that important after all. Yeah, that's right. So all I'm saying is you be careful that we're not walking around judging other people for what they're doing or not doing. He says this, be careful. That word judge means to distinguish, to decide, to try, to make a conclusion, to decree, to sentence, to think something. What do we look, we look at stereotypes, right? You look at somebody that comes into the mall or somebody that walks into the restaurant, somebody that walks into the church house, somebody that walks into your place of employment, and immediately don't tell me you don't do this because we all do it. Immediately, we make an assumption. Yeah. Right. Immediately, we come to a conclusion about that person, mm -hmm. good or bad. Yeah. Wait a minute. The Bible says, I, I'll be honest with you. I understand as preachers, God gives some, God gives preachers, uh, I'm not saying he doesn't do this for the whole church, but I think for, for preachers, he gives a special uh, type of discernment out there. Yeah. But at the same time, we have to be careful that we're not using, you know, we're not just walking around and say, hey, making assumptions and, and making making just blanket statements for people, and you have no idea what that person's going through. Right. Yeah. 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 You don't know their background, you don't know their history, you don't know why they're doing what they're doing. You know? I, I, I'll just give you what, you know, and, and, and just I'm not I'm not making a statement either way. Long hair. Yeah, yeah. For women or short hair for men. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I heard one person say there was a lady that was battling with a disease that was making her hair fall out. Mm -hmm. And there are people in the church judging her because she had short hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lord help. Yeah. What, what are we talking about? We're not judging that woman. You have no idea why that lady has short hair. No. Is she trying to be rebellious against God? No, she has a medical condition. She can't yeah. help it. Yeah. If she could, have, she could grow hair, she would. What's wrong with the church? Yeah. yeah. Amen. That we have to make assumptions. Now, I'm not saying all assumptions are bad. We live in a world today that, you know, I think you can spot a jerk a mile off. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm not saying we all go, well, well, we we'll have to make assumptions. So there are things that, that, that work out well. You see a creepy dude crawling around your house at night, you're going to make an assumption, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Because most people don't, well, you know, creep around the houses at night, you know what I'm saying? Except for creepy dudes. And uh, that's when you bring up the gun, the baseball bat. Yeah. And tell you what, yeah. how do you take care of that? There's somebody outside. You know, whatever the case may be. Judge not. He said this. Now, in this passage here, he's talking about observance and not observe of days, meets, drink, and times and things. And he's distinguishing the difference between the weaker brothers and the stronger brothers. Yeah. I'll make a statement here, and, 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 and it may not be 100% accurate, but I think it's pretty close. <laughs> it's the stronger Christian. Who can handle the differences in, of Christianity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's the weaker Christian who says, it's, it's my way or the highway. Yeah. 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 I'll be honest with you, Brother Bob, when I was first saved, when I was first called into ministry, yeah. that was my mentality. Oh, yeah. I knew I was right. Yeah. And if you, didn't, if you didn't toe the line and did everything I thought, you were wrong, and I was right. Yeah. The older I get, you know what I realize? Yeah. <clears throat> And there's a whole lot about this thing that I fully don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Right. The yeah. older that I get, you have, yeah. you know, maybe it's because you have kids involved. Now you have grandkids. You become a little more compassionate, a little more merciful <laughs> type of thing. And I'm going to tell you what. He says here, don't judge one another. Why? Because there are many weaker brothers out there. Now, he does say this. He does to give us a distinction here between these things. He said, why? Every one of us is going to give account of himself to God. Now, see... As a preacher, as a pastor, a pastor will one day stand before God for not only himself, yes. his family, but also for the way the church is run. Yes, sir. Okay? But in, on an individual level, each one of us is going to stand before God. Mm -hmm. yes. Husbands, you'll stand before God for yourself and your family. Yes. Yes. But each one of us is going to stand before God for himself. Right. Yeah. That means if I govern myself, 
I will have I will have room for others around me to even point a finger at me. You know, the Bible does say you know, if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Yeah. So that doesn't, we don't walk around saying, "Well, I'm doing this. I know it's wrong. But don't judge me." The Bible says not to. That's not what God is saying. No. But you see, if you and I learn how to live in a proper fashion as a believer in Christ, then guess what? There's not going to be room for finger pointing. People will say, well, I saw you, I, you did this. Well, wait a minute, because I'm, I'm trying to do and live my life the best I can according to God's word and his will for my life, and therefore I'm going to stand before account for him one day. I don't need to have you telling me your list. Because yeah. what happens is this. Eventually, we come to, you ever, you ever guys, you ever like paint the room? Or ladies, I guess, I guess we're, we're, we're in a multicultural society today. Women do the same thing as the guys before they try to, I don't know. Or you paint the floor. You varnish the floor, whatever. You always start from the end, you work your way to the door. You never like start, you never start at the door and work your way to the back of the room. Why? Because after a while, like you painted yourself in a little corner. Yeah. And now you can't. But that's sometimes how it is in church. Yeah. Right. We say this, we do this, we say this, we can't go here, we can't do this, we bless God over there. And all of a sudden, pretty soon we painted ourselves in a little corner. Now we can't get out of it. We can't live the Christian life because we're so Bob down with stuff. Your list, my list, his list, her list, their list, that church's list. And we're like, man, I, we, all of a sudden the joy of living for Christ is now zapped out of our life because we're so busy making sure yeah. we're living by lists. Yeah. Yeah. Make sense? I think so. Yeah. He says here, be careful. He says, be careful, be careful that you're not using your freedom in Christ. And that's what we're doing. Well, we have freedom. Yeah, you do have freedom in Christ to live for Christ. Yeah. You don't have freedom of Christ to do what you want to do yeah. and claim it freedom. Yeah. Well, I don't have any money, so the wrong bank. Freedom of Christ, I have the freedom to do so. <laughs> That's stupid, folks. Yeah, right. But there are, be careful though, because there are weaker believers out there. Yes, sir. For example, I use TV. I'm not against TV. I think TV can you can watch a lot of bad things on TV. I don't necessarily see in the Bible that TV is bad or good. I think it's just be careful of the moderation of what you do. But let's say mm -hmm. I invite Brother Bob over to my house. I'll use Bob because he's a good one to use as an example here. Yep. <laughs> and there are some people that say, bless God, there should be no TV. That's fine. Okay? But let's say I, I don't have that conviction. But let's say Bob's, you know, he grew up and he, he watched all sorts of wrong stuff and bad things. He got saved and he got saved, you know, or he didn't say, you know, I don't think TV is good for me. That is, that is, Brother Bob, that is your yes. way of living. That's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. Yeah. But now, I don't agree with that. No. And I, I don't see, and I think as I grow in Christ, you can lie down watch TV, but you can also do things in moderation, and it's not going to be bad. Right. Yeah. But let's say Bob comes to my house. I invite him over for supper. Yeah. And I know Bob, his big thing, his hang on his television. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm not going to do for Bob? I'm not going to say, hey, Bob, after our dinner, want to go to the, want to go to the den and watch a movie? I'm not going to do that. You know why? Because it's, it's a stumbling block. Yeah. Exactly. And I'm not going to throw a stumbling block in the way of a weaker Christian to get them to start doubting some things. Right. And pretty soon, most of those people that doubt will eventually jump off the bandwagon someplace and yeah. on their own longer serve of Christ because they get all wrapped around the actual things that don't right. matter. That's right. All I'm saying is here, he said, judge not and don't put a stumble block. You know that somebody around you, a family member, somebody in the church, is struggling in the area, yes. and you think, well, bless God, they should be strong enough to handle it. Yeah. You don't provoke them. No, you don't throw it. You have to be like, you know, how does one of our older ladies you know when a cane walk by and stick your leg out and trip her? <laughs> Who? You think, what a meaning. Who would do that? That's exactly what it's like in the Christian life, you know? Somebody who's struggling, somebody who's weak in the faith, you yeah. walk by, <laughs> and trip her. Like, ha, 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 look how funny. That is, that's not funny at all. I don't that's right, come on. So he says here, judge not one another. Look at Romans chapter 14, verse 19. So we look so far at love one another, judge not one another. Romans 14, verse 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and things wherewith one may what? Edify. edify one another. Edify. What does the word edify mean? It means to build up spiritually. Yeah. One, uh, one commentator said this. I, I wrote this down. The word has unfortunately lost its freshness of meaning. But we have no other single equivalent for it in English. It is the upbuilding 
or mutual help and assistance in the spiritual life which Christians receive from their interaction with each other. It's as simple as simply you and I are put here to edify or to build each other up. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, most, I, I don't know what it is. You know, I, I think sometimes you know, we, we do more damage to ourselves than we help ourselves because I think the reason why we don't make an impact in the world for Christ as we do because the world looks at the church and sees all the problems the churches have. Right. Most of the problems the churches have are yeah. fights, yeah. problems, yeah. jealousies, yeah. contentions. Paul mentions that to the church, doesn't he? But all yeah. these dissensions and schisms and isms going on, some are of this guy, some are of that guy. Hey, listen, you know, the church house. I mean, I'm probably stepping into the matters. I'm probably going to step in, but I'm going to step in. Come on. God gave one man to rule the church. Yeah. Yeah. That man is a pastor. Yeah, man. Now, yeah. that does not mean that there's other, there's, that somehow that he puts his pants on differently than the rest of the men of the church. He is the man of God who God has placed to then to govern that body. Yeah. Yeah. But he's not the only one that has some wisdom. That's right. yeah. He's yeah. not the only one that has some experiences of life. Yeah. 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 And there are people sometimes, if we're not careful, that said, well, this personality. I, 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 you know, again, I don't know any of you. And I don't know any circumstance. So if you're thinking that I have an agenda, I have no agenda because I don't have an, I can't have an agenda because I don't know anything. Well, somebody told you something. No one told me nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. I don't want to do nothing. Yeah, right. yeah. But sometimes, you know, the new guy comes in, sometimes there's a personality that's been there for a while yeah. that people say, I'm here. I don't like that new guy. I'm going to sit around because I like this guy. Eventually, maybe this guy will be what I want him to be. Yeah. And so I'm going to follow this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And this deacon's been here for a while. He's a nice guy. He's been here from round rank to day one. He's a smile. He knows my needs. And I'm just going to follow that guy. And I'm going to follow the assistant. Or I'm going to follow <laughs> this older. That's exactly what we put out of the church. Yeah. Some were Apollos, some were this guy, some were Paul, and the whole church is divided in disunity because yeah. we're following personalities. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I understand there are some people in the church that we, as a pastor, I'm not offended when somebody would go to, you know, one of the hardest things, one of the, one of the, this is the hardest thing, that's probably it. When I was in Connecticut, yeah. <laughs> I was my dad's assistant. And that's, 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 you know, that's almost the way it ought to be. You know, the older, the younger, my dad, he told me what to do, and I did it. But I went down to Pennsylvania, so get closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I went out to Pennsylvania. <clears throat> About a year after we went out there, my, my parents uh, left the ministry there and came out to help our ministry and also to do nursing home ministry. Which, by the way, he still does. Been, he's got like a dozen nursing homes he does on a weekly basis. And, that's his, he has support as a missionary to missionaries and nursing homes. But he's all, he was also then, it became, and, and in all practical purpose, he became the assistant pastor to me. Mm. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Having your dad as the assistant pastor. Because yeah. Yeah. what do I do? Hey, dad, do this. Hey, dad, do that. <laughs> 45 years of misery you caused me. I'm going to get back to that. I don't think I'm going to do more than 35. But, um, no, I was, I'm very careful. Hey, <coughs> Would you like to do this, Dad? <laughs> Would you mind teaching this class? Would you mind preaching tonight? Would you mind? So there's a, there's a way. But you know what? There ought not to be this poor personality conflict. No. Yeah. Otherwise, the church house becomes nothing more than a game show. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And we wonder why the cause of Christ is of little effect. We wonder why people aren't getting saved. We wonder why the church house is growing. Because we're so worried about who we're following. Yeah. Now, I believe that you need to follow the pastor that God has given to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't follow so blindly that any decision he makes, you follow through. That's why God gives wisdom to yeah. people in the church. Yeah. Right. Any good pastor realizes that. I'm going to bounce things off of him. Now, there are decisions he has to make, yes. Yeah. But there is also some wisdom given. Yeah. There's also some the, uh, the elders of the church, if you want to call them that, yeah. that has wisdom about them that we don't have to worry about personalities. We follow Christ. We follow the leader that God has placed before us. And guess what? God then gets the increase. Yeah. Amen. 
But we're not about that. We're about it. It's all about number one. It's all about me. Yeah. Yeah, what can I on. get out of church this yeah. morning? Yeah. Let me ask you a question. If that's the philosophy, I'm not saying stay home. Because we need people in the church house. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying get your heart right. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not about what you can get out of the service this morning. No. Yeah. Well, I have people say this. They, they may have good intentions. We'll pray for Brother Abby or pray for the preacher so that you know we can get something from the Word of God this morning. I understand it. But if the only reason why you come to church is for what you can get out of the church service, you come in church for the wrong reason. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you are just as a vital part of this ministry, yeah. this yes. church, as a pastor, as a pulpit committee, yeah. as a song leader, as the people up here performing, or performing, it sounds like we're doing some kind of like a dog show. You know? <laughs> they got the, the, the singers, the worship team, I don't know what you want to call it, the people up here doing whatever it is they do, you know? Yeah. Uh, the Sunday school teachers, hey, listen. You're coming to church so I can be a blessing to somebody yeah, today. That's right. yeah. Yeah. I really thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that'll change your whole church experience right there. If you can figure out, hey, who can I be a blessing to today? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? Well, I don't know how to do that. I'm not, I'm not one of those kind of bubbly people that walk around and, <clears throat> and just talk to people and bless people. <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes just showing up. Yeah. 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 Is a blessing yeah. to people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The blessing for preachers. Yeah. 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 When people come. Yeah. And I've yeah. seen that person so long, man, it, it puts a smile on your face yeah. Yeah. when you walk through the door. Yeah. Being a blessing to those. How can I edify? How can I build up? How can I spiritually build up those around me? Well, that's a question you have to answer for yourself. But it says here, let us therefore follow in the things that make for peace. So in other words, we're going to live peaceably with people. Yeah. And we can edify those around us. Yeah. I can build them up. We can fellowship together. We can, we, can, we can do things together. We can build a relationship together. I understand that not everybody in the church is going to be their best buddies. Mm -hmm. But there ought to, you, ought to, you ought to have some good friends in the church house that you know can build you up spiritually. Yeah, right. yeah. It's why, you know, I'm all about, I love sports. I have no, there's no problem with talking about things of this world. You know, I don't know if you guys like NASCAR down here or not. It is the South. I don't know. There's some NASCAR fans. What kind of, what kind of sport is that? You know, this guy driving. Left. Left. Yeah, that's right. Left. To me, that's this. Well, I'm talking, I'm, I'm talking, I'm going to be, be careful. Boop. Little hole, ball. I, to me, I'm like, Give me a football, give me something to hit, you know, to break some spinal cords, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that kind of stuff. But um, I look, that, all that kind of stuff is fine. But whatever happened in the days where, where men would get together? Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm, again, I'm not against talking to sports, but actually, all of a sudden, somebody brings up a spiritual question. Yeah. And guys talked about the church. Yeah. Talk about how, hey, what are some things we can do for the church? What are some, how can we, how can we minister better? What, what, what did you read the Bible this week? Yeah. Is there anything the Lord is speaking to your heart about? Ladies do that, no problem. Because they're more emotive. Guys are like, talk to me about what I read in my Bible this week. <laughs> Careful. Well, how spiritually building each other yeah, up. That's right. In Romans 15, verse 14. <clears throat> and sometimes when I care for we think, well, we're just going to live... This whole live and let live. But other times, God's word says a few things different about that. Look at verse 14. I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with knowledge. Oh, I'm sorry. That ye also are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, able also to what? Admonish. Admonish one another. Almost kind of flies in the face of some of these things we're looking at. But you know what? If you love somebody genuinely love somebody and care about their best interest, if you see that person doing something wrong, you're going to admonish them. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You're going to correct them. That word admonish means to put in mind, caution, to reprove gently. Mm -hmm. This means to teach, yeah. to instruct, to encourage, to warn. Well, you know, we're just, we're just going to let people do what they want to do. Well, wait a minute. There are times when sometimes we need that little gentle nudge in the other direction yeah. of life. Yeah. We need that the person 
And you know what? You can, you can take correction from somebody if you know that person loves you and cares about you. Yeah, that's right. Now, this, is, this isn't the, uh, the commandment that we walk around and say, bless God, brother, God put this gift in me to discern your faults and your failures, and you need to turn or burn. <laughs> Yeah, but if you're just a crotchety old man and nobody loves and cares about it anyway, nobody's going to receive what you have to say, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Man, if you love somebody, you love your children, you're going to correct your children. The right. Bible says that. What father does not love his children that brings discipline upon them? Right. You don't discipline because you're mean. We're not talking about abuse. We're looking at a gentle correction. Why? Because you care about their future. Yeah. You want the best for that individual. What about the people in the church house? Yeah, what about the people that are on the other side of the, the, the church aisles that you never speak to or talk to? Wait a minute. They, they, may, they, they, they may be a point in time sometimes admonishing or warning or correction or gentle uh, caring about somebody may be put in place here. But if we don't know them or love them, we don't even know their names, how in the world can we ever build them up? Yeah. How in the world can we ever teach them what is right or wrong to do? And man, say this, I, I, you see that here in this verse, he says, that ye also are full of goodness and full of knowledge. So it seems that God, or Paul, kind of gives us a little bit of a, uh, a condition upon this. You know, the person who just newly saved and I walk around and, and admonishing people for what they're wrong doing. He said those are full of goodness yeah. and those are full of knowledge. Yeah. Ought to be those that are Walking around, walk around as a brother, looking for people to admonish, you know. I'm looking around, around, ooh, you look like you're doing bad, ooh, I'm going to land upon you. No, but in your goings and comings, you see things, you hear things, and you love them, and so you warn them, you admonish them, hey, brother, I noticed that those who are spiritual, restore such a one, right? Yeah. That's what the Bible right. talks about. And so be careful. Ladies, you know, as you're walking, having ladies' meetings, you see some, another sister, why is it in our churches, I know a lot of thoughts randomly flowing through my mind here, but why is it in our churches that we are the, we seem to be the group that shoots their wounded the most? Yeah. yeah. That's all right. Yeah. You're right. I love a good war picture. I really do. But you know what? When you're, when you're in a battlefield and you get hit, you know that one of the primary concerns about your fellow soldiers are, let's get that wounded back to safety. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. don't do that in our churches. No. You're struggling? Yeah. Bam! Yeah. Let's kick you while you're down. Yeah. That's when they need sometimes people the most. That's, That's when right. they need your encouragement the most. Yeah. I haven't seen a brother in a couple of weeks. You write them off. Yeah. Oh, how, about, how about some of you doing to visit that brother or sister that hasn't been here for a couple of weeks? Yeah. To admonish them, hey, we've missed you. Yeah. We love you in our congregation. You're a vital part of this ministry. We'd like to see you back. Yeah. So, admonish one another. And lastly here, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. We'll stop with this one this morning. Galatians chapter 5, verse number 13. There it is. Thought for a minute, Galatians wasn't in my body. There it is. I found it. So verse 13, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty, only use not your liberty for occasion to the flesh, but by love. What's the next one? Serve one another. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what, we love to serve, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Hey, honey, give me the remote. Yeah. Hey, kids, give me a bowl of ice cream. The world, hey, get me a beer. <laughs> yeah. We love to have people serve us. Oh, yeah. yeah. He says here, with by love, again, there's a key thing right there, love. If you don't have love, guess what? You're not going to do any of these other things you mentioned. If you love and love somebody, you're certainly not going to serve them. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to serve somebody else and give of yourself and humbly submit to their needs if you don't love them. That word love, serve right there, is the word duleo, which we, it's another doulos, which you've heard that before. If, if, if you're through the Bible, it means to be a slave. Yeah. It, it means to be in bondage to, to serve somebody else. And so what he's saying here is, hey, listen, you're supposed to be a slave to those around you. I'm not saying walk around saying we're all being chained up to people. I think you understand what I'm saying. I think you just need to learn how to serve people. Yeah. He said, don't allow your liberty to become licensed, but everything we do should be done out of love 
for each other. We are united to simply to think about the needs of other people. Think about this. When people come to visit our churches, if people come to visit Harvest Baptist Church, a brand new person comes in the door. Let me ask you just, just three questions. We're done. Do you care about who they are? <clears throat> yeah. I'm here, do my time, part of the time card, put money in the offering, sing the little songs. Go back home after all, you know, the game's on this afternoon. Oh, we gotta, you know, get a good seat at the whole crowd before the Methodist crowd gets there. Do you really care about them? Yeah. Do you care that they're there? Yeah. Man, you, you know, like, I've been in church like this. New visitors come in, and they sit there, and they have no idea where to go. They don't know what to do, and there's nobody talking to them, and it's awkward. You've been in church like that yourself, I'm sure. You know how awkward it is? You know how much it, it, deep down inside you wish for some smiley face to come up to you and shake your hand and, and guide you to where you want to go? Yeah. Then you have little kids involved. You don't know where, where the nursery is. You don't know where the Sunday school class is. Hey, they'll never come back. Stop. Because why? Because you, you, their message is given. We don't care who you are, and we don't really care that you're here. But isn't that why we meet? Yeah. yeah. Because we care about people yeah. coming in. Yeah. And we care about who they are. Yeah. Yeah. Do you care if they ever come back? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about you, but, you know, this, this philosophy, us four no more, stinks. Yeah. 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 You say, well, we're not in it for the numbers, brother. The people that usually say that don't have any numbers to even worry about. That's right. Right. Yeah. That's right. Well, it's not about how many people you have. I don't know about you, but as a preacher, I'd rather preach to a, a full congregation. Yes, sir. I, I know from all different walks of life, yeah. new people, old people, young people, as opposed to just a couple in the front row. Oh. Yeah. How many churches do you, dark, you, you drive down to the church, that church is closed and that church is closed? Yeah. The, you know, Ichabod looked across that and that, but those ones doors have been closed for years. And what if you're in thriving ministries? Yeah, yeah. Somewhere along the way, yeah. we stop caring about people. Sure. I'll tell you what, people don't care what you know yeah. until they know that you care yeah. about them. Yeah. You know, let's go, we have more degrees than the thermometer, about 180. Who cares? If you don't know how to care for somebody, what does it matter how many Greek words you throw out in a sermon? Yeah. You don't even care about who they are. Yeah. Yeah. You don't even go out of your way to greet them. You don't care if they come back next week because your whole agenda is all about, you know, all I'm saying is we have to take care of the Lord <laughs> serve Amen. those around us. Matthew 20, verse 28, even as the Son of Man came out to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for them. You know why Christ came? To care about people. Sure. Amen. People that work too pretty. Matter of fact, he didn't go. Can I say this? He didn't go to the church houses. Yeah. He went to the bars. Yeah. He went to the strip clubs. Yeah. He went to. Understand what I mean by that? Yeah. What are you saying? I'm not trying to be sapulous. I'm saying yeah. Jesus cared about the people. Yeah, he did. He cared about those that needed a physician. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not those who are already doing the right things and making them better with the. We care about people. We care about where they're at. We care about who they are. When they walk through the door of our church, we have to be, hey, there's a new person. And I'm going to sit there. I really care about you. I'm glad that you're here. You know, I look forward to you coming. So anyway, there are some things this morning I think that we can feast our minds on a little bit there about how you and I treat each other. We'll continue, I think, this list uh, in the evening service tonight. Father, thank you for the Sunday school hour. Father, I pray that you bless our morning service. Lord, I pray that everything that was on this morning, from the singing, to the preaching, to the fellowshipping, Father, would just bring you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray.